Here's a look at what's coming up in today's video. Quite often when out at the beach, as you've probably seen in many of our other videos, we find a lot of ammonite nodules and we decide not to crack open quite a few of them. The main reason being that they probably just wouldn't open with a hammer and chisel. The vast majority of ammonites we end up taking home and preparing them. We've made a few videos on this in the past, however we're looking to make some more fossil preparation videos and this is one of them. Today we're going to be preparing a beautiful double Dactylioceros ammonite nodule. This nodule has one big complete ammonite hidden under the limestone and another imprint of an ammonite right next to it. I'll leave it to Shea to introduce the fossil. Today we're going to be preparing one of our large ammonite nodules that we've got here. We've got a double specimen. You can see a nice big imprint on one side. And then just to the right of that, we've got a pretty big ammonite underneath the rock, which we're going to have to expose using the other tools. Let's go get preparing it. Jay's going to be doing the preparation of this ammonite and I'm going to be filming him doing it. We've prepared a lot of single ammonites, much smaller pieces. This one's a little bit bigger, a bit more exciting. As we get better and better at preparing fossils, we'll start working our way up. And the goal is to be able to prepare marine reptile fossils. Even more difficult still, preparing fossils such as fossil fish is something on another level altogether. Particularly preparing teeth of either reptiles or fish. The nodule's pretty crusty, as you can see. But the first thing we have to do when deciding how to prepare a fossil deciding which tool to use first. There's a lot of thick limestone over the top of that ammonite, as well as the crusty outer layer. We decide to get one of our biggest pens, which are powered by compressed air, and start removing the thick crust. Once the crust is removed, we can already start removing some of that limestone that's covering the fossil. We need to thin the limestone out and then the closer and closer that we get to the fossil we can start using more precise tools which remove less and less rock. Using air powered tools is one method of fossil preparation. There are several other methods each suited to different types of rock and different fossils within the rock. There's all sorts of different situations where you might choose one method over the other. We'll show some other methods in upcoming videos. Shea's switched down to a smaller pen now. And this is the T-Rex pen by Zoic Paleotech. We're very pleased with getting one of these pens particularly for working on pyrite material. It cuts through the pyrite really, really well. And the pyrite is the gold-looking appearance of the rock. There isn't much pyrite in this specimen particularly, but there is in quite a few others. Already we're making a lot of progress. It's looking really good so far. The whole preparation process for this ammonite alone took probably just over an hour. I've cut the video down just to show the highlights. There's a lot of learning to do and some parts of the preparation, especially now where we're starting to remove the inner worlds or remove rock away from the inner worlds, some of that can take so so long. You have to be very careful and precise, sometimes even getting a magnified view just so you can be as precise as possible. As we remove more and more limestone, we get closer and closer to the smallest worlds of the ammonite. When it gets to that, we'll drop down to an even smaller pen. You 
can already see the fossils starting to come to life. At the end of the video, I do have the fully prepared specimen for us to have a really good look at. As you can see, Shay's dropped down onto one of our smallest air compressed pens now. That's really for removing a lot of the really tiny pieces of limestone. The ammonite isn't too far from being finished. However, the finished specimen will look a lot better than it does now. Removing the bulk of the rock is always the quickest. Actually doing all of the very fine work is what really racks up the time. I think for one of our first ammonite preparations, probably one of our first ten actually, we have practiced on several. But compared to most people, you know, we're only just starting out. Getting to be able to prepare fossils as good as my dad one day is of course the goal for us. And here's the finished specimen. I think it looks brilliant. Really pleased with it. We certainly wouldn't have thought it would have ended up looking as good as this when we first started out. What a brilliant job for a great fossil. Well, thanks for watching that video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any feedback, just let me know in the comments and I can hopefully use that to help improve future fossil preparation videos. If anyone would like a fully prepared specimen prepared by either my dad or by Shea, please just contact Shea with his details that are at the end of the video and he'll get back to you as soon as he can. Some of you may recognise some of these shots from one of my much longer fossil hunting episodes, which is on the YouTube channel. Looking forward to being able to get out and hopefully make a few more really unique fossil hunting videos. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video. That's awesome.